What's up guys, this is Coach Donnie with ElevateYourself.org. In this video, we'll learn the most effective way to perform a two foot approach jump or running jump, which is essentially a vertical jump with a running start. This is the preferred jumping method for many ball sports, such as spiking a volleyball, dunking a basketball, or jumping over a defender in American football. If you're looking to increase your vertical jump, then check out my online training programs that have helped thousands of athletes increase their vertical jump, which include body weight only workouts for those of you who don't have access to gym equipment and programs that maximize all the standard gym equipment. I also offer online personal training and customized programs for athletes who want a more personalized experience. Sign up in the description box below today to start increasing your vertical jump. Now let's talk about the approach jump technique. I'll be breaking this down into three categories, which include the footwork, torso angle, and arm movement to help you better understand the jumping mechanics. Because jumping is just as much about skill and technique as it is about speed and power. Start in a standing position with a slight forward lean and one foot in front of the other. In this video, I'll be reviewing a four step approach jump but you can apply the same principles to a three-step or five-step approach jump. Just switch your feet accordingly depending on how many steps you plan to take. Jog lightly on the first step, then jog again on the second step with a little more pace and distance, then powerfully push forward with greater distance and speed with your second step in order to elongate your third step, which is also called your penultimate step. Finally, punch the floor with the ball of your foot on the last step, which is called your block step. Perfect. Perfect. Your foot should be pointing toward your jumping target on the first and second steps. On your penultimate step, your foot should be turned 30 to 45 degrees and your block step should be turned 45 to 90 degrees. If you finish your jump with right left footwork, then your last two steps should be turned toward your right. If you finish with left right footwork, then your last two steps should be turned toward your left. Rotating your last two steps helps your body convert all of your horizontal momentum into vertical momentum. Your torso should be leaning forward slightly in the beginning. However, as you enter your penultimate stride, your torso should be perpendicular to the floor or as upright as possible. This allows you to quickly push off the ground as your torso translates over your feet, stacking all the important joints on top of each other, which maximizes triple extension of your ankles, knees, and hips. If you continue to lean too far forward during your penultimate stride, it will take too long for your body to recover into an upright position, which will slow down your approach and make you jump too far forward, which ultimately lowers your vertical jump. Your arms should start at your side, then scissor your arms to match your jogging stride. On the second step, you can bring both arms forward or you can continue scissoring your arms for another jogging stride. I recommend experimenting with both arm movements to see which feels the most comfortable. Your arms should not exceed chest height. Perfect. Perfect. Then powerfully bring your arms back and as high as possible so they are at peak height when the heel of your penultimate step lands on the ground. Then quickly bring your arms forward and upward to assist in converting the horizontal momentum to vertical momentum and reach as high as you can. Now we'll talk about landing mechanics, which is essential for reducing joint injuries, especially in the knees. You can experience up to six times your body weight upon landing from a jump. So that's a lot of force on your joints. 
Make sure you land softly into a half squat position, which means thighs at or above parallel, hips back, and chest and arms forward. This will help dissipate much of the landing forces, reduce soreness, and prolong the life of your joints. Improving jump technique will help you jump higher by itself, so treat it like any other important skill that needs to constantly be worked on. If you would like me to personally evaluate your jumping mechanics and provide you feedback on how to improve your jumping technique, then sign up for my online jump technique evaluation service below. The last aspect I'll talk about is intent. You can have perfect technique, but if you're not moving with maximum speed and intent, then you're not utilizing your fullest capability. The general flow of your approach should be slow to fast. If you accelerate too early on your first step, you will lose potential energy for your penultimate step, which is where you should be generating the most power. So have a patient approach and explode during the last two steps. One easy way to increase your movement speed is to start in a relaxed position and release as much tension as possible and keep your arms loose throughout the entire approach. One easy way to elicit maximum intent is to always try to touch an object that is at your highest reach or just above your highest reach. If you found this video helpful, please share this video with your friends and teammates who would like to increase their approach jump. Make sure that you watch my other jumping technique video, which is about the standing vertical jump, and I'll link that video below for you guys. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more jump training and volleyball training videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next time.